Grah. That's okay. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I, I wish tonight to uh, talk about the Australian flag. On the 3rd of September, 114 years ago, a bit of cloth, a, a blue flag, our flag, 11 metres long and five and a half metres wide, was raised for the first time from the main dome of the Royal Exhibition Building in Melbourne, then the home of our Commonwealth Parliament. Whether on the battlefield or the sporting ground or diplomatic posts or schools or homes, just like mine on the Sunshine Coast, right across this country, the Australian flag, that, that blue flag of stars and crosses, has come to symbolise our, our young federation and the values for which we stand. And the origins of our flag are rather unique. In April 1901, the Prime Minister, Sir Edmund Barton, announced that a competition would be held to, de to design a federal Australian flag. Over 32,000 entries were received, with five near-identical entries being awarded equal first prize and sharing uh, in £200. And on the 3rd of September 1901, at approximately half past two, the Prime Minister announced the winning design and that, that bit of cloth, that blue flag, was raised. The Commonwealth Star, originally six-pointed, represented the six colonies that united to become the Commonwealth. The seventh point was added in December 1908 to represent all of the federal territories, which then, combined with the states, constituted the nation. The Five Star Southern Cross represents our place in the world, an ancient and con constant presence in our night sky. And the Union Jack, comprising the crosses of St George, St Andrew and St Patrick, serve to represent the <coughs> principles and ideals inherited from the United Kingdom on which our nation was founded. Parliamentary democracy, the rule of law, freedom of speech and the liberty of the individual. And this flag, our flag was flown for the first time at Olympic Games in St Louis in 1904, where there was only one Australian competing. In 1908, all military establishments were ordered to fly the flag. And on Christmas Day 1912, Frank Wilde, a member of Sir Douglas Mawson's Australasian Antarctic Exhibition, raised the flag to take possession of Queen Mary Land, which is now part of the Australian Antarctic Territory. In the theatre of war, in the Middle East and Europe, the Pacific, the jungles of Papua and, <laughs> and Vietnam, East Timor, Afghanistan and in the Middle East region and many other places, the Australian flag has been flown as a beacon of the freedoms and liberties for which countless brave Australian men and women have fought. And I believe that all serving Australian Defence Force personnel should be gifted an Australian flag to honour their service to, to their nation. It disappointed me that when I was recently in the Middle East region, meeting with, with serving personnel of the Australian Defence Force who had to buy their own flags to take over with them. And I'm calling upon the government to make sure that all, all Australians who serve in, in, in the Australian Defence Force are given a flag rather than being, being forced to go onto the internet and pay, to, and pay money for it. Now, um, and I will be writing to the new Prime Minister, uh, asking him to make this one of the, the first acts of, 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 of his government. Now, the Flags Act was personally signed by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in February 1954. And may I detour uh, to congratulate Her Majesty, long through, through my good friend Senator Smith here, on becoming the longest reigning monarch in Australian and British history. Her Majesty has served Australia and the Commonwealth of Nations with grace and dignity for over 63 and a half years, a reassuring figure in sometimes quite an un uncertain world. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Flags Act of 1953 was amended to require a referendum of all Australians be held in order to change the flag. The Australian National Flag Day is an occasion this is on the 3rd of September uh, to reflect on this national symbol and the values it represents. And organisations such as the Australian National Flag Association do great work in building community understanding of the flag and its history. Now, I am a, an ardent, ardent supporter of, 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 of free speech, uh, the right for people to be quite uh, rude about each, each other. However, I do find it reprehensible when, when, when hooligans and troublemakers who have no respect for Australian values or the sacrifices of those who have fought for those values burn, damage and desecrate our flag. Uh, it is my, my belief that burning and damaging with criminal intent the Australian flag should be an offence 
And I, I note that my colleague in the other place, George Christensen, intends to introduce a bill to amend the Flags Thank Act you, to make McGrath, it.